Hello, it's Rafael Gutierrez. Welcome to our channel again. Today I'm going to talk a little bit about uh, how you could use the opening move of Fugata Edge in a selfless defense scenario. Now, one of the things that usually happens is a lot of times people tend to think of things as being an absolute, like this will work 100% of the time. The truth is, everything can fail. And so the thing I actually look at is I, want, I usually want to use people who are bigger than me, stronger preferably, and what I want to check out is the technique. And the reason is this. If it works for me against someone bigger than me, then there's a possibility, a better possibility that it's going to work for someone smaller than me against someone like me. So that's one of, one of the things I try to do. The other thing is I try to use uh, what I, my understanding of clinical anatomy, how things actually move, how things shouldn't move, and how people react to certain moves. One thing that I always tell my students is remember that if you're dealing with a punch scenario if one punch is coming another one's coming as well so you have to actually use that and see if your technique works with a secondary attack coming now that said i actually have seen a couple things that have been pretty interesting this week uh, one of them was a couple videos that i saw uh, and a couple comments people have made on anatomy and what is good and what is bad now most people a lot of people out there will use their personal anecdotes to determine what works and that's fine for a personal anecdote but you can't really say that that is enough for it to work for everyone and the nice thing that we have is we actually do with the internet now we actually have access to a lot we have access to a lot of different uh Websites and one of the ones that I actually tend to use a lot, which I recommend people use, is PubMed. PubMed has every, almost every article done that's published is available there, at least the abstract. And so a lot of times you can actually get an idea of what is actually out there. Now, two things I did see is uh, is the uh, 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 two things I have seen is some people are talking about. You know, uh, training barefoot, if, it, if it's good or bad, uh, they use themselves as examples of why you should do one versus the other. Truth is, there is some research on, you know, how people stand on feet. Usually one of the things that happens is they found that walking barefoot tends to, seems to take off pressure from the uh, knees, mostly because of the arrangement of the foot. As you notice, if you look at a foot, it's kind of arched. And so when you stand or you hit, it actually does tend to, if you land properly, it tends to actually almost act as a spring to keep you from doing damage to your knees. I did see another one where someone said they were using biomechanics and they used their hands, but they didn't weren't able to explain what they were doing. Now, one of the things is there are certain ways that your arm moves, there are certain ways that it doesn't move. And the only real way to actually see if something works or doesn't work if it moves a certain way or doesn't move, is to you the uh, know the muscles, how they work, where they work, and use the, the science of anatomy and even kinesiology to determine how things move. Now, a lot of times people say, well, we're doing this and we're investigating this, and they don't have the background to understand that. Now, that's not, not, that's not me trying to knock someone. What it is is, well, I'll be honest, if someone asked me about laws and martial arts, I would have to refer, say, well, look, based on what I know, it's this. But, you know, the truth is you have to go to a lawyer to understand what the laws in and are martial arts. Historic content, there's people who do history, the history of martial arts. Uh, there are translators, and those they tend to do a lot better job at translating the history of martial arts versus someone who doesn't study history. Now, there's another thing I actually ended up finding, and I was looking online for different things and someone came out with the, a top well usually you find the top 10 list this was the bottom 10 list and it was the 10 worst martial arts now i'm not going to talk too much about it because when i looked at it i really saw part of you know some of the stuff okay i could see yes this would i would agree with some stuff for instance when they're talking about uh, things that seem to work on mysticism i tend not to fall for it but i can't really say it's worthless i just all i can say is for me it hasn't worked and 
you know, against me, a lot of the mysticism doesn't work. So that's one of the things that, you know, is, is what I can say. It doesn't work for or against me, as far as I have seen. Now, if someone can tell me they can hit me with a chi ball from across the world and knock me out, no, we tell me what time you're going to do it. And we'll see if, it, you know, I'll be up and you'll see if you can knock me out. But that's that uh, aside, some of the arts that they actually did, I was pretty much thinking the person had no understanding of how the martial art worked. Now, I don't practice uh, a lot of martial arts, but some of the martial arts that they actually mentioned, it, I've actually trained with people who have taught those arts. And I found a huge benefit in a lot of these arts. It almost seems like they didn't understand how the art worked or what you were trying to learn. Uh, and so a lot of times, you know, when I look at these top 10 lists, I will look at them. And every time I see them, I, I don't know why I look at them, but every time I see these things, I'm pretty much disappointed. And they, like I said, this one, uh, uh, the worst martial arts really was... A list made by someone who had no idea what they were talking about. So, uh, that said, and I'm sorry if uh, if you disagree with me, but what I am using is the downward block as seen in Fugata Itch. If you don't know Fugata Itch, you can look at the video and you can see the first two moves are downward block and punch. The next moves are downward block and punch. Third, downward block and punch. Now, I use a downward block, but one of the things you'll see is I don't necessarily use it as a downward block. So... I hope you enjoy this and have a good day. If you really enjoy, if you enjoy these videos, please consider looking at one of my books and uh, tell me what you think. If you bought one of them, let me know. Uh, the other thing, there's two things I actually also want to mention. This Saturday, I will be at the Japanese Friendship Garden uh, doing a demo with my school in uh, for their Cherry Blossom Festival on uh, the Saturday. What is it? Uh, March 10th. And... On March 17th, I'm going to be doing a book signing in Alpine. Uh, and I'll talk about it more next week. But if you're in the San Diego area and you're in the Alpine area, I'm going to be at the Alpine Library and hope to see some of you there. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to do the uh, quickly uh, how we use the, this move if we've got the edge. So I have a volunteer here. A couple of different ways you, we actually have it. You can use it. For instance, we grab. I can actually come elbow here. You know, I'm dropping and I'm twisting here. What you notice is, as I twist here, the arm is actually at, at a nice area where you can't come across. As the elbow here supports that, it makes this movement really easy. Now, one of the things, if you come over here, you'll notice on this area here, over here, really close. You'll notice that I'm actually turning his elbow in and turning it here, which actually is going to put pressure on the joint here. So, this move here, besides being here, I'm also using my legs to shift forward to actually produce more force on the uh, arm. The other way it could be used, if it was from a bear hug type of scenario, you can come here and it's just, again, drop. In this case, you're actually using your elbow on his head. So if you can come over on this side, let's see what I mean. Elbow on the head. To bring us down. Now, as you are doing that, and you're using the legs, again, you're using that temporary, that transitional move to drive more force into the neck. Now, a lot of some people will say, well, you're going to injure the neck. Well, chances are his neck, or most people's necks, is going to be, be built so thick that that's not going to be an issue. Again, if you do the other hip, the other hip, we can actually get the same thing. Again, we're actually turning here to I get the wrist out, but over here, we can't come around putting pressure here. This here now actually becomes an elbow to the arm. And if it's done quick, just here. So arm is free. Next move, you actually have the head quick. I'm not a big fan of uh, things from an arm because, like I always tell people, from here I don't really have to worry about the arm he's grabbing. I can still punch from this hand. But if it's from a, if it's from a bear hug, this will be actually more beneficial, or if I actually manage to get the arm here, you actually have another benefit here. Now, if you notice, I'm not grabbing the arm. I'm actually maintaining my arms ready, so you do have the punch there. Uh, so that is one way you can actually use a first move of, a couple of different ways you can use a first move of Fugata Itch in uh, 
Assault Defense Center. Thank you. Thank you and have a nice day.